All right. If y'all got questions, now's the time. All right. Hey, Jay, I have a question. I'm going to be making an art book similar to Dark Soccer slash Street Fighter. Uh, art books, and was wondering how do you deal with pressure? Because right now I feel kind of scared. That's the right way to put it. Because our uh, final u- uni year is still, or it's just splits into two major projects, and I'm having a difficult time relieving myself and balancing the time between the projects. Um, yeah, I hear you. So, what, uh, what are you scared of? That was not rhetorical. What are you scared of? Scared it's going to be good and or might not be able to meet my own mental image of the product. Have you ever watched that video that was circulating on Facebook? Finished, not perfect? Yeah. That applies here. Why does it have to be perfect? Why does it have to be limited to some mental standard? Especially if you've never done one. You know, I've talked to you about this many times. It's like, if you guys haven't done something a lot, there's no reason to suspect you should be any good at it. Remember? And I think a lot of times why people get stuck is because of this one specific problem. They just don't want it to be great. And I'm trying to say, like, no, it's probably not going to be. Uh, but you're going to be proud of it because you finished it. And then you do another one, and you're going to be better. And you do another one, and you're going to be better. And so forth and so on. You know? Oh, by the way, Tim, uh, Rochelle's like, he's typing, so that's why I'm letting him just do other things to chat. But if you can talk, it'd be easier so I can focus on painting and so I don't have to keep looking at the chat. But anyway, uh, Rochelle, just before I get to Tim's question. You know, that's that's really kind of what I'm trying to make sure you understand is that you're 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 getting too much in your head and it's always preventing you from doing good work. Like for last class when you got out of your head you were doing much better. Remember? And hanging out with peers and people that were very supportive that helped out too, didn't it? So maybe that you should do the same thing. You should stop getting so into your head and just get out of there for a second. Yeah, it's, it's something that I don't think you'll ever really get past. So it's not about getting rid of it. It's about just managing it. Knowing better kind of stuff, like just knowing that you're just being in your head. And you're going and getting past it and get back to work. And you have the Roa Pencil Crew, people on the on the forums, I'm sorry, people on the Discord, people on the Facebook group, people in this actual Skype conversation, you know, hang out with each other, guys. Yeah, I've been taking advantage of it too, man. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. Anywho, Tim, what's up? Hey, man. So you're saying, what were you asking about? Uh, well, basically, I was just trying to get a sense for what your opinion is on uh, generating an appropriate range for an entry-level portfolio. 
This is my first oh, character class, but I want to start generating stuff, you know, or have a plan. Yeah, I'd say like twenty to twenty-five, or twenty twenty to twenty-four. I mean, um, twelve is a good minimum that you can say you have a portfolio, but it's very little. So maybe like twelve to fifteen characters, and then pages at, uh, and separate pages for like their weapons and props and how you design those or something. Yeah, just uh, go online to like ArtStation, for instance, and just look at other people. You know, and see what they have in their portfolios, and you'll get a good sense. Um, just start going and scoping it out. Uh, I think PlayStation's great. For instance, I go there right now. This is pretty cool painting. I like this a lot. So let's go to this person's painting or page and see what their portfolio looks like. So they definitely have super sexualized stuff, mature content. So <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 20, 21. See? That's about it. So, so to me, this page is almost entirely illustration, except for a couple of the design, you know, images. Yeah, so let's just, just keep looking around. You know, it's, you'll see kind keep of talking. a variety of of people's portfolios there's no right way you know there's people that have very strict like art station type portfolios sure, sure. there's people like me who are just like it's whatever i draw something I just put it up i don't really give a fuck right. <clears throat> so i'm probably not the best example but like i said there's people like sparth uh, who just have just very clear portfolio you know and uh he's like me too he just draws a lot just puts it up Damn, he has more than I do, definitely. But does he? Do I have more than him? He has more followers than me. He's he's like me. He's a, <laughs> he does a volume type strategy. He just pumps out volume. This is smart. I, don't know. I should do Gumroads. Post the Gumroads onto, uh, onto our station like that. That's clever. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, he, he's already beat me, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 350 images bastard it's really cranking him yeah. yeah but he he is like he's cheating he's putting some of his oldest work in here too mm. so this is like like a decade worth of work uh the other question i had is cheating. when you're doing uh thumbs and uh you're doing poses to try to suggest like uh you know story behind the character or their vibe do you find yourself generating at least when you started out uh, pose reference. Sorry, say that one more time. I was distracted by looking up stuff. Um, so when I'm doing uh, characters and I want to um, make their pose kind of suggest like their feeling or, uh -huh. you know, our story. When you were starting out, did you um, find yourself um, collecting pose reference uh, oh, until yeah. you got used to doing that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um just assume I've done everything. <laughs> like, like that makes sense. Like, I, I might have not done, um, uh, you know, I might have not done. I can't think of something. Oh, like, you know, just like vehicle, like kit bashing or something like that. That kind of stuff. I don't really think I've done much of. Mm. But like, you know, have I done? Uh, life drawing or posing or like yeah all kinds of it taking pictures of myself use as reference yeah sure sure you know that's the that's the kind of strategy is just I, i'm a pure volume guy like i just volume i just there was a painting that i had in my mind right now so i got distracted earlier when you were talking to me um that i want to kind of i remember i was like oh i need to like learn how to do that but i don't know if i saved it i hope i did 
hope. I yeah, did. Art station will do that for sure. It did. Sweet Jesus, I did. In the world. Okay, I'm gonna go backwards engineer this. Search Google for image. Let's see if I can find this person. It's a Chinese artist, of course. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I did a lot of that, what you were just saying, like, um, post stuff, you know, mm. and, uh, I, I did a lot of construction drawing that even traced a lot of stuff to, sometimes, you know, right. I did all kinds of things just to try to improve myself. Gee, you know. What does it say? Or it's like Tino? I need to find out who, does, who did these. I'll do this later. But now looking at these, let's see what I'm trying to do with this image. Um, you know, so you know, for me, like I'm, a, like I said, pure volume. Like I always tell people that there's a phrase that people are used to, which is, you know, um, quality over quantity right mm -hmm. and i say to that it's more like uh quantity fuels quality right right does that make sense that the more you do something the better you'll become at it yeah totally a new message from ryan we're having a oh hold on i got like a Slack message. Hold on. I'm going to turn off the monitor for or screen for a second. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. All good. Because it's probably top secret stuff. I'm working on like <laughs> a, I'm working on this game called Osiris uh, New Dawn. You guys can check it out. Yeah, my uh, boss made me the art director yesterday, so I'm really excited. Congrats. Yeah, he's saying that we had, there was a meeting. It's nothing important that you guys can see. Um, talking about the next, uh, what you call it, week or so. Um, but uh, yeah, he made me an art director. Um, part time too. I can work from home, mm -hmm. which is cool. Like the whole company kind of works from home, so it's really cool. Uh, we had like really cool ideas we were talking about yesterday, which was like I do some concepts and stuff and uh, put it out there for like the the users to look at and kind of make their own opinion and voice what they would want to see. That's cool. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, that's a great idea. Um, you know, so that we can leave it out, like removed opinion, like personal opinions or even professional opinions. Just like, what do the people want? If you want the, yeah, duck, exactly. the duck face looking one, then let's give him the duck face looking <laughs> one. You know? Seriously, like yeah. I, I've been a big believer like that yeah, people don't know. Like I, I had a really long conversation with uh, some students in the evening class today um, about this because a lot of them were getting really philosophical. And I was just like, dude, take it easy. You know, because, um, <laughs> yeah, because it's like, you know, the, I call it the Darth Vader versus uh, the Boba Fett. Um, design sensibility and what I mean by this is that Boba Fett is really cool looking and Darth Vader is not but Darth Vader is we love him though because of what who he is and what he does in the movies and Boba mm -hmm. Fett doesn't do anything cool in the movies he really doesn't <laughs> nah he pretty much just dies yeah he, he, he chases Han Solo around a little bit but Vader's the one that caught him and Vader's the one that carbonated him, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, uh, yeah, it's just really, like, that. that's kind of my point. And I think uh, a lot of times 
like developers get too caught up in like the minutia. He like he said it himself, like the whole ivory tower mentality, like these developers like just stay in the shelter and don't talk to the communities too often. They listen to the feedback, but then they'll that's that's pretty much it and they'll just go and just kind of like assume that they know what the people want and then when they release it and people whether they love it or hate it. And I think if you do what you guys are doing, like the uh, community has like an already a connection to what you guys put out. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, they 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 want they they are they already like the product, and you're just making it so that you provide a service that can do like is connected to them. So then it becomes more theirs. Like they really feel like it's theirs now, right? I agree yeah, for sure. So anyway, yeah. Um, sorry. So like that's that's going on. I'm gonna check right now again what he has to say. Daniel said something too, right? I'm going to check that right now, too. Yeah, he did it right back. Um, was that helpful, though, that advice? Yeah, yeah, totally. Great. Yeah. Great. What are you aiming for when you do the tracing exercises? Uh, it's more like checking your answers. Like, have you ever had the math test and you had to, like, you know, at the end you can go back and look at the back of the book to see what you did right? Right? Or what you got wrong? You understand? I don't know if they do that where you guys are from, but where we're from here in America, America. Um, we had that like in our textbooks where you can check your answers. You know what I mean? And what that does is like, so like, like when I'm studying and I think I got like the shapes right, like the proportions, um, I'll draw what I think the shapes are and then I'll trace and then compare and then that's really really enlightening um sometimes i don't even do that sometimes i go straight to tracing and just to see what, what the shapes really are you know and just take them out of context um for, for instance gymnastics uh, let's find a really good i think actually yeah this is gonna be good Um, so, you know, like, let's look at this, her, her, um, left or her right leg cab. All right. Let's just draw that shape. All right. And then let's draw her back leg the calf all right and then what you do is you move it and you'll discover something interesting which is that when you move them you'll see the shapes for what they are and it gives you some insight on what you can think about uh, for instance that the foot and legs they're pretty pretty similar in length so this says something to me about either this is like a long lens or like this leg is bent a bit it's not entirely straight right also tracing helps you see like you can do this and see like where is the barrel of the upper torso where does the insertion of the shoulders and the, the arms go in and then you can do like a different color and be like where does the the mid torso go and like how is it turning and you can just draw like the center lines and stuff like that to make it easier for you to see you know and then just use that information in the future you know, like think about it and really like analyze and understand it does it make sense does it help Jordan, you can you can unmute yourself. I know Danielle's running into some mic issues, that's why I let her type too. But Danielle, was it helpful? Yeah, like that's kind of a throw to you too, Tim, when you're asking your question, right? 
Hopefully that helps you out even more. There's no, there's no cheating when it comes to studying. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can copy, paste, color pick. You know what I mean? Do whatever you want. Because you're just trying to learn. You're trying to understand. You know, you're just trying to make sense of it all. It's when you start to do that for, even for like professional work, you could do all that stuff for, even for professional work, right? Like you can color pick, copy paste, like that's like what photo bashing is in a lot of sense, right? The only thing you just can't do professionally is steal people's work and call it yours, right? That's literally it. You can't like just go to ArtStation, copy, paste an image, put it in your portfolio and be like, I'm done. And you, you wouldn't want to do that anyway because you'll get a job potentially on accident or incidentally, and then you won't be able to do the work and you'll be blacklisted once they find out that you're a freaking a fraud. So, yeah, it's in your best interest, obviously, to not steal people's work. Um, but I get the desperation for some people. Uh, and, yeah, but when it comes to studying, though, like, yeah, do whatever the hell you want. Like, who cares if you traced? Like, uh, Lip, right? Your your man lip, he um he's been doing plain air paintings right, and he's been using an image, and he looks at the image, and he draws from that image, right? Like he's not drawing that from an imagination, you know. He's he's taking advantage of the the reference at hand, uh. But what he's doing, which is really great, is he's making it his own by warping the perspective a bit, right? And the colors and the 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 texture, and that's why it's awesome. That's why it's more than just a kind of like a study or a plein air painting. It's like it's his, it's like his, you know, like John Sargent and like Leindecker and some of my idols. Like I mean, they literally just look at people and just paint them. They they have things in front of them that they're painting. They're not imagining these things. You know what I mean? A uh, Leindecker or not Leindecker, but uh, Rockwell used to just like straight up just take pictures of people. So he wouldn't even like have the models there. He would just take pictures of them and, and then just put them together later. Oh, how do you get a job, Blizzard? Uh, having good work <laughs> that fits in the Blizzard universe. <laughs> For any one of their, their teams. The WoW team, the Diablo team, the StarCraft team, the Heroes team, the Hearthstone team, Overwatch team, or the Cinematics team. Uh, I My work fit in the Overwatch team. Or, I'm sorry, the, the, the Cinematic team. So, to kind of piggyback off of Jordan's question... Yeah, go for so it. let's say you had the uh, the uh, twenty to twenty five portfolio, and then you're like, yeah, you know, I really, I really want to go for a job uh, at Blizzard doing Diablo stuff. So would you suggest like maybe making an additional like five pieces that are very specific if your general portfolio doesn't isn't all like Blizzard only style, you know? Uh, here's a really good way of answering these types of questions that you guys can do on your own, right? This is a really great way of answering these types of questions. Uh, I've been doing this recently. Imagine that um, you're on the Overwatch team, okay? Mm -hmm. And you want to hire someone to work on the Overwatch game. Like, as a concept artist. Specifically characters. Out of all the stuff you see in front of you, do you see something that might stand out? Yeah, right, like this one right in the middle. I did that purposely, mm -hmm. right? So so what does that mean? Like, does that mean all these other artwork is garbage? No, not at all, right? Right, right. It just means that this is clearly a winner, so let's go there and check it out. Oh, this is something else. I got that for myself. And let's go to this person's portfolio and see if they have more of the same. It's like they have these two. And look how, like, I'm even ignoring some of their better paintings, right? I'm looking for can they can like consciously keep doing Overwatch stuff, and the answer is yeah, probably can they do the job. Probably the answer is probably no. Actually, even though they had that one, because so, probably they're starting to get in, into the 
they're probably getting into to falling in love with Overwatch. That's why this stuff is starting to happen, right? Because originally they didn't. Mm-hmm. You can tell. Like it's not that they're bad. So like this might be a thing where we have to require an art test. Get it? Right. Just to make sure. Yeah, and then like so here's someone that's clearly did Overwatch thing, but we already have John Paladora, so we don't need another one. Right. You see how like the recruiting process is kind of working, huh? And so it's like maybe this guy, like this guy has some style. So let's try to see if this guy has something painted. Uh, unfortunately, not. So let's move on. Right. It's not like the artist okay. is bad either. It's not that that person can't even do work. She's not uh not for us, Overwatch team specifically. And you know what's funny? Right. Like my paintings are here. Right? So I'm even ignoring my own painting because <laughs> I don't. Right. I don't, this doesn't fit in that world. Yeah, exactly. So, like, whenever you ask yourself that question, it's really that simple. Like, like just look at your work. Can, is it at the stand, at, at the minimum, is it at the standard of what they already have? Mm-hmm. And if the answer is no, then you're not going to get a job there. Like, why would they just say, uh, imagine in, in any other situation, let's imagine like you're a, um, you're going to be a doctor, right? And you, you come to me with your resume. It's like, like you have no real experience, which is fine. But like you, you come to me and say, yeah, I've, I've kind of like taken care of some patients in my garage a few times, put some bandages on people. <laughs> They're going to be like, get the hell out of here, get the hell, <laughs> you know? Cause or you're, you're still in school or something, yeah. Yeah, or you, well, I mean, you can still be in school and be like, you know, like, uh, uh, what's his name, Doogie Hauser. <laughs> you know, you can be a, <laughs> you can be like a really great, that happens oft, often, right? There's people that are just really amazing at something, sure. even though they don't have the certificate yet. Right. Right, then it's just a formality to get the certificate, if that makes sense. Um mm. My point is, is that you have to be at that level, though. First, that's the that's the kind of point. You got to be able to do the job. That's all I'm really trying to get at. Okay? Yeah. And if you can't do the job, then then that's that's how you answer that question for yourself. You know. Right. Like if you were to get the like Blizzard or any other studio, it's not going to be like, oh, you know, you did a you did okay job on this this Diablo concept. Uh, but you'll <laughs> you'll get them next time, Tiger. Right. It's not like school. It's like in in class, you guys are allowed to fail. Like you guys can do really bad in my class. You know, um, you can really hit the hit the bottom of the barrel, and I'm gonna pick you up. Right. I'm gonna pick you up and be all right. Well, let's talk about why. Right. Let's let's work on that. You know, that's why you're here. That's why we're taking. That's why you guys are taking my class. You know, to to learn, and to to be be able to make mistakes in front of a professional. And that professional give you some advice on how to prevent that from happening in the future, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole point of like classes in school. Uh, the reason why I don't grade you guys, and the reason why I, I treat everyone differently, relatively, right, is because I know a simple fact that not everybody is at the same level, and it's stupid to treat you guys like differently or at the same. I mean. Like, if you can't yeah, yeah. live up to this, it's like, you know, it's like, no, like, some people need to work on just pushing their design, some people need to work on their time management, some people need to work on their confidence, some people need to work on uh, their variations, some people need to work on leveling up, some people, you know, you guys are all different, and some of you guys need all of them, or some of them, or a selection of those. Um, but when it comes to a job, you got to be able to do the job. Can you move the product? You know? Yeah, consistently. Consistently, yeah. That's even that's a great point, you know? And you and you know, as much as you would like to think you can and like, like oh what if like what's the least minimal viable product to, for me to be able to get a job? Like, you know, those are the kinds <laughs> of questions I hear, right? And I'm like, I think you just know the answer already, you just don't want to admit it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fine. Like I think it's it's okay to not be able to work already. But what's not okay is to kind of deceive yourself, right? Right. Because um, what's worse than not knowing whether you're good or not or whatever is thinking that you're good enough when you, you're you absolutely wrong, right? And to, right. anything you're trying to do to kind of convince yourself that you're good to go, like, is, is just a distraction. 
you got to like get in there and be like, okay, I'm not good enough. Like, what can I do? And just work towards it. And, and then unlike any, uh, like most other jobs, you know, as much as it may seem like art is subjective, it really, it really doesn't need to be, especially in the entertainment industry, especially if you have a, a company that you have in mind that you want to work for. Like the same artist, can that artist work for Pixar? Hell no. Right? right. But maybe this one can. Right? Sure. Let's go to this person's stuff and take a look at it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He can definitely probably work for Disney or, or Pixar. Mm. Absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind. In fact, Daniela, you might find some inspiration here. I'll put it in the links for you so you can check it out yourself. You know, I'm a big fan of of stylized and animation-friendly artwork, you know, because it's all about shapes and personality. Uh, it's something that I don't do a lot of, but I get inspiration from it. But if you ask yourself, okay, we need someone to design fantasy characters, you know, like, can this person do it? Probably not. But this is like the only example of it. it was, but it's not enough. It's, like, it's not a good concept. Oh, this is this might be good. But again, it's not. This, this doesn't prove anything to me about concept art. But illustration, right. absolutely. Wow, this is beautifully painted. Now, if I need someone to paint something really well, I know I know a guy, <laughs> right? Right. But illustration, I think he's working on it. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like this. Can, we need an over Overwatch modeler. This guy might be the the one. You know, I already follow mm -hmm. this guy. You know, we need a realistic Battlefield one. <laughs> you know, like this guy can do the job. Whoops, I didn't. I'm not gonna hire you. Sorry, buddy. And then with modeling, you actually don't need as many because it's harder. It's much harder to do one of those than it is to do one painting. But, you know, fantasy illustration, bam, this is pretty cool. You get my point? Yeah. Hold on just a second. I'm going to check on my chat, make sure my boss is, like, read my shit thing. Oh, he's typing right now. Speak of the devil. Because it's almost 9.30. If this is urgent, I might have to end the class a little earlier. Sure, though, it might be a short meeting. Would you, would you want the space travel and space station? And... I'll let you know if I get out early. Oh. Ping you on Skype. All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like just, I think a lot of the stuff is pretty, uh, like it's a really great way of understanding, engaging how your work is. You just put your work next to the people that are already doing that work. So for instance, like right. I, I've done that too with this, uh, Osiris project, right? I, I'm getting into space designs and I do a lot of robot stuff but this aesthetic is mostly realistic so, which means like mm. it's, it's not like we want to make it look cool obviously but it's like somewhere sure. along the lines like the Martian you know like where it's kind of like the future right. but it's like also you know closer to contemporary than yeah way out there. Yeah. and that's not something that I'm particularly the best at and so I spent a lot of time yesterday gathering tons of reference to, to be prepared for to get myself ready to, to be better at that, you know? And over this week, I'm not going to do tons and tons of studies. And uh, that's why I started getting a bunch of Sparth images too, because I want to live up to that standard. Because he's an art director. He's doing pretty... Like, his is a little bit more fantasy, sci-fi, like it's Halo. But he, he, has mm. a, he has a really good practical sense about sensibility about it now still. But, like, we're, we're more and more and more and more along super realistic you know and so I want to try to find a way to draw really cool realistic stuff but also uh, like really cool realistic stuff like it looks realistic but it's like really cool it looks kind yeah. of derpy but it's like something that you're cool with 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like over the top. So I hope that helps you guys. Gives you some insight. I've been trying different uh, layer stuff. I never do pin light. Let's see what pin light is about. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's actually really cool. Some glowy bits. Well, it's like it's allowing me to paint over the the blacks or the darker values. Yeah, look at that. That's great. I like it. Because it's not really painting over. It's kind of like just substituting that color. Right. Right. Anyway, any other questions, friends? Oh, yeah, I like yeah, this. On. I like this a lot. Nope, you're not allowed to have one. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> All right, <laughs> next. <Or> go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking. I was um, I was on the Discord, and then someone asked me um, what kind of story or like background I was thinking I had for the characters, and I was just wondering how deep I should think into, like I should think about that. Oh, not I, too deep. I think that's a good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good question to have. Like, uh, for instance, I, I don't have anything I'm thinking about this guy other than maybe he's like a butcher. <laughs> like, he's got some yes. gold helmet thingy, which is really cool. Because my friend's going to come up with a story. I'm just trying to create something that um, will allow him to be inspired by that. And that's kind of where I'm going to go with this answer is that it's, it's more about, like, because y- you will never, as a concept artist, be in a position... Uh, I'm sorry, I never said the word. Um, you you will rarely be in a position where you have control over what the story is. There, there's people that are already doing that. You know? That's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, a good example is like, hey, we're going to work on Harry Potter in the next movie, whatever, right? We're re-envisioning Harry Potter. Or let's pretend that it hasn't been made at all, actually. Um, so then, the way that that works then, right, is that... Um, the way that that works is that you are basically going to read the book and we're going to take descriptions of like Hogwarts and you're going to have to design Hogwarts. Like what does Hogwarts look like? You know? And it's not like you invented it. It's there, but you're just going to have, your job is to try to unify everybody else's vision. Right. Um, And then when you're doing something like that, like it's, it's harder to kind of, like, because like, like I said, like the story is someone else's job. And then there's other instances. Like, that's why I said there's a Bubba Fett who's just a character that just needs to be a bounty hunter and looks cool. Right? And that's it. There's nothing else about that character that's meaningful. Yeah. Right? And even like uh, George Lucas went on record and was like, I don't, I never understood why people love Bubba Fett as much as they did. <laughs> right? Yeah, true. And so. Okay. You know, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Uh, but when you're doing your personal work, you, you have an opportunity to come up with story and some sort of ideas. But even then, I would say you're never going to have to be able to explain that, though. Right? Yeah, Like you, 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 you just got to have to try to visually explain it. And I think I do that really well. Like, I have a good way of doing really cool images that look like they have some story there. But between you, me, and everyone else that kind of actually knows this, I don't really think about anything. Uh, <laughs> I really don't. I, I I am just allowing myself to just paint something. Um, but because I've painted so often and I have that so inbred into my subconscious, it, it comes out reasonable mostly because of all the years of just painting so much, right? And so... Yeah, I was thinking like... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so like, I mean, it's okay to like think, okay, this guy has some sort of agenda, or this character has some sort of role, you know. Like giving it a little bit more personality, I think, is a good tool to help you design better, right? Yeah. Like to to give you fuel for the fire, right? But that's it. It shouldn't, like, you shouldn't be like, you know, like, I mean, you can though. You can build a whole world if you want to. Like that's absolutely fine too. But just trust that most people just won't know. Um, uh, my buddy Tyson Murphy, we were hanging out in Italy, and we were talking about this, and he was talking to me about like how he would spend you know weeks sometimes like really designing this thing and really thinking it through and 
really being proud of this design that he did and put it out there for the uh, the community and they'll just be like this is garbage <laughs> and then he'll put out another thing that he did like in just like an afternoon like after lunch or something and he put it out there for the community and the community is just like this is amazing you know and they'll be like whoever worked on this needs to fix the other thing and he's like i worked on both <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah and that happens I, a lot right like, like we were just talking earlier right like about how we're going to crowdsource kind of the, the feedback in terms of concept art that's like to solve that problem because we can get all high horse and there's plenty of videos online from youtubers and other even other concept artists that are just like getting really philosophical about like these directors and how they were really thinking of all this stuff um i, I don't think so i don't think any director thought that thoroughly you know i'm not saying that they were mindless you know um but i like for instance uh, my buddy uh mike hill like he's re- he did like really cool elaborate like videos about like uh james cameron directing it the movies and how good those movies were and i agree with it mostly uh but at the same time like yeah, it's like you're reading between the lines a little bit you know like uh especially yeah. like the jurassic park one like it's a metaphor for birth and life and stuff like that and i'm like <laughs> no no the movie had a very deliberate <laughs> deliberate um theme it was uh not playing god that's yeah, it's it. easier to assign meaning after the fact you know yeah it, it was it was very meaning. yeah there's no it, it's it, there was no other meaning than it was don't play god this will happen when you play god yeah you know they they even say it in the movie you're so worried if you could you never stop to think if you should All right that's the, yeah that's the whole theme that's it because like you know john hammond's like the whole time he's just like really uh, excited about this and no matter what they're trying to say you know their criticism he's just like no it's cool it's not about like this crazy rebirth and all that. like no uh, i remember <laughs> like same thing with like uh, pacific rim like del toro is like one of those really he, he's really deep to he tries to be that way and he had the scene in the movie he was talking about i was watching the commentary about it where he said like the one of the characters um you know the little girl scene where she's like a little girl and she's walking with her shoe, it took a red shoe and all this stuff. And in the commentary, he's talking about how like that shoe is her heart, and the heart represents like her lost family and, and all this. Stuff. And I was like, what? I didn't get any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a little girl getting lost, you know, and she was looking for her mom, and then that's it. Uh, you know, sometimes people get too like. I think you, you you're supposed to have some sort of like you should have some theme and you should have some context, you know. But it shouldn't be it shouldn't be more than that. It shouldn't be crazy, like super like if people really dig deep they can find the meaning. There's a word for this type of like thing that people do when they look deeper and deeper, right? There's a word for this type of thing. And it's just it's it's just a silly thing. Um it, it's like the it's something that the scientific community uses to to kind of talk about the people that do stuff like the flat earth, the flat earthers. <laughs> you know, they, they talk, it's a word for those types of people who just like can find evidence in the most obscure ways, you know. And uh, and it's one, of, it's like a, it's a, you can't like reaffirming dis- your own beliefs. You, know? you can't disprove it type of stuff. For instance, like we all can agree that there's not a teapot floating around the sun right now, just floating, hanging out there, right? Well. I don't know. You never know, man. But know. but yeah, but you you we could go we could we could go. Well, have you seen it? <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, of course not. So well, then how do you know? You know, it's like that's that argument, right? There's a name for that. I don't know what it is. I should re- learn it. You just started a teapot religion, man. <laughs> but there's a word for this this type of thinking. Uh, and what I'm trying to say is, don't be that kind of person. Just be very clear. Uh, I I remember. Um, and you might not even think you are, but trust me, like you can. Like there's things that you might think more so than you are. You really realize you are, and that's why I always tell people: just go on the caution of that you just don't know versus you do know. Because like, yeah. like you, if you're in an argument with somebody and like really into it, and you're like it's heated, and you're like you're like ah, then ask yourself a real serious question and be like, but do I really know? Like, do I really know about like medical? things because <laughs> if not like why am i arguing so hard about like this you know do i really right. know about that subject i kind of don't so maybe i should stop arguing about it <laughs> you know 
and uh, you guys are all—we're all victims of this. You know, we all do this because it, it's a—it's a human thing that you just don't want to be wrong, right? But being wrong is a very powerful tool to becoming uh, wiser. You know, uh, and this is something that I learned uh, later in my career. The more I, my friends and stuff would prove me wrong, the better I'd become because I'd be like, "Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't really know how to do this." You know. But I used to be really standoffish in the very beginning of my career, but then I changed that as I um, got better. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm immune to it. Of course, I'm still there's some things I still be very standoffish, uh, standoffish. But eventually, I will I'll ask myself that question, like I just told you guys, you know, because it brings me back and be like, you know, what? I really don't know. <laughs> so stop talking about it. And but for, for for instance, this I definitely have a lot more wisdom in, which is that people just dig way too deep you know to get real philosophical and I know that that's not entirely right because I remember my friends were like arguing with me about uh, Ninja Turtles like oh, they shouldn't have nostrils and all this stuff and I'm like so listen man Ninja Turtles is a kids movie man like you're arguing about the most silliest thing right now you're saying that this movie is terrible because the, the Ninja Turtles have nostrils <laughs> Like, you see how silly that argument is? Like, you gotta understand that. And they're like, no, I'm right. And I'm like, all right. And then the movie came out, it did really well. And I was like, remember that movie that you thought was gonna be dead? It did really well. You know why? Because little kids lost their minds. They're like, this yeah, is amazing. They didn't care about the nostrils. Yeah, they're, they're not like, they're not stuck on superficial stuff. They're stuck on the fact that one of their favorite TV shows is a live action movie. You know? I'm still trying to put my finger on why it's so popular, Ninja Turtles. Like, I I love Ninja Turtles, too. So, like, this is, like, a genuine, like, like why? How come Ninja Turtles is so awesome? <laughs> you know, like, why why do I like it so much? Uh, I had a conversation with somebody about it. And they're, like, saying, like, it's because it's, like, it's funny. And, and it, it's, it's, it's cool and it's funny. Cool because it has turtles, and turtles are kind of, kind of cool looking right but they're like ninjas and that's like funny the, the irony of like you know you if you wanted to put an animal to be a ninja you would like want a cat or something right so that makes sense right but a turtle and it's like the same uh same thing that kind of happened with kung fu panda right it's like the same kind of argument and that's why that show did probably really well too it's like pandas not what you expect yeah yeah and it's like that contrast and i was like oh that's that's a good argument i, I, I kind of I can see that. I can I can run with that, you know. Mm-hmm. But on the surface, it's kind of silly because Transformers makes sense. Just like robots turning into cars and tanks and shit. That shit's cool. Right. <laughs> that's that. That's like that's obviously cool. All right. That's that's really cool. Uh, Power Rangers makes sense. Just like you know, these guys just can turn into super badass ninja people. And then, like, they also, like, control individual robots that can transform into one big robot. Like, that's just cool. It's all cool. <laughs> I'm really excited about the Power Rangers movie because it literally looks like a Power Rangers movie. The first right. movie, I loved it when I was a kid, the one that came out. But uh, looking back, I was like, ah, oh, man, it's just basically just a longer TV show, a longer episode. It wasn't, like, yeah. it wasn't truly, like, a live-action re-envisioning of the thing. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be cool. We'll see what the what, what it's like. And it's kind of going with the Breakfast Club vibe too, which is kind of a cool idea. I like that. I'm down with that. Instead of just like, you know, TV. <laughs> like right. antics. But anyway, Another getting back to... random generated monster. Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, I think it's, I think it's, it's really important, you know, Jeff, to kind of like consider that it isn't just mindless, you know? Um, yeah. But you don't have to get like, too like uh too philosophical or too story driven you know what i mean i think the the aesthetic like makes sense i think that's enough right just make it look cool and that everything works in terms of looks yeah i think uh it wouldn't hurt to give them like an agenda like uh if they're a ranger then thinking about how they can be differently than normal and like i said story could help amplify that like fuel that it's right. a lot of time as well, though, getting the story together. So. No, I'm saying, like, just write a sentence. 
You don't have to like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's, I'm saying, like do bare minimum storytelling. Don't do like full on like write a paragraph of a novel or anything. I'm saying like, I, I agree that writing a story is another tool that helps reinform your designs, but I don't mean write like a novel story. I mean like just write like instead of just saying archer with a bow, be like an archer, uh, like a a knight type warrior or like a knight being that hunts like this lizard people and uses crystal arrows, <laughs> right? Like that's like a sentence. It's like an RPG generated sentence. Mm -hmm. NPC, you know? So that way it's not just generic stock archer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I'm really good about pushing my imagination. So that's why I don't really worry about writing stories. I kind of just like this guy already, I can, I can already feel that my friend's going to be like, Oh dude, <laughs> you know, he's going to be excited to write a story about this guy and I'm excited to see what kind of story he writes about him. Right? Okay. I was like, I was going to give him two legs, but I was like, no, what if he had like multiple legs? <laughs> this is weird. Like, why does he have multiple legs? So I don't know. You tell me, Galen. <laughs> you know? And maybe he won't do anything with it. But he he's really good about like looking at all the little details and trying to find something about every little thing. The latest one that I did, like I love that uh, I love that the painting too. That was a lot of fun to paint, but I also love the story he put to it. It was cool, great twist at the end. I was like, oh, what a twist! I was like, nice. <laughs> and it's like, it's it's backwards. Usually, it's like someone writes the story and then you have to design. Uh, but I'm like designing and then he writes the story, and I think we both prefer it. We actually think it's better. He says he's like, it's a good challenge. It actually makes his job a lot easier. He doesn't have to think too much about like, what should I create? Like, what's a cool premise like it's kind of the artwork is the premise you know and then he right. has to now write something based off of that premise and it's a really cool kind of like thing that just happened and it was just like a thing where i was like wanted to i've been doing demos now because i've been doing classes again and then um and he's been writing a lot and so i kind of wanted to work with him in some capacity and this is like the best way we found to do that because we literally yeah, work together in a studio and um uh, we didn't really work together. We just were in the same office, and it sucked. Because I feel like if we were, if they put us together, we would have been unstoppable. We could have done all kinds of cool stuff. But you know, you live and you learn. Uh, any other questions, friends? One thing I noticed: taking up time is socializing. I live in. I live in, in, with three of my best friends in a student halls type thing. We sometimes end up chatting for like three hours. How do you manage relationships with uh, keeping up your responsibilities? Um, I read a, like when I was talking to some student in a different class about like, because they were talking about time management. I think it might have been this class. And we, were, we went online. Remember, we went and Googled it. And then we found like, uh, we found like an article that just gave us like 10 tips. And one of them brought up, like socializing it was like you know ask yourself the importance of the conversations and delegate the time of that so like if you want to hang out with your friends i'm not trying to say don't because i i cherish that as well in my own life but is there any way you could like be working and talking you know because i i do that all the time if not then like you know just make sure you you just don't socialize like um and so then what you need to do is set up times where that's going to be more obvious. For instance, um, really early in the morning, most people are awake. Like, are your friends awake right now? So probably a good time to start doing work when no one's around. Like, for me, it's really good to do work at night because my kids are all asleep. And they're not, like, running around and stuff like that. Right? It's a better time for me. And then during the day, it's like, oh, Okay. But you hear what I'm saying, though, like, in the morning, are they awake, like, 7 in the morning? If not, then maybe you should wake up a little earlier than normal, because probably not. So that way, it, it's not that, you like, you're, not, you're trying to avoid them. It's just that you've kind of just naturally avoiding them without, like, hurting their feelings or anything. You don't have to say, hey, guys, this is important. Um, but you, if they're your, yeah, if they're your friends, too, like, they should understand. So, like, let's, like, I don't mind having conversations, but, like, can we do it in my room while I'm working? You know, like, it's only a problem if you if you keep it 
you know? Like, I always say, you're allowed to have excuses, you're just not allowed to have the same excuses. Right? Because if you have the same excuses, that means you're not doing anything about it. You're not making any changes. You're just letting it happen. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, it's okay to complain, but if you don't do anything about those complaints, then it's like, I, I don't have any sympathy for you. You know? You're allowed to. You're just making the choice to be unhappy. Yeah, you're just doing it to yourself. There's nothing I can do. I, I can't force you guys to do anything. I can tell you and I can give you some advice, but at the end of the day, if you still have the same problems, then you, you need to ask yourself some serious questions. And uh, trust me, guys, like, you don't want something traumatic to happen to you before you make those dramatic changes. Like, I don't want uh, for you, Rochelle, to be kicked out of your house living on the streets before you start taking this all seriously. You know what I mean? Just like proactively prevent that from happening. And there's going to be occasions, guys, it's impossible to avoid super life stuff. You know, there's going to be big stuff that's going to happen that's going to fuck your shit up, right? That's just unavoidable. <laughs> like like my uh, friend Caitlin says, like, life, life is hard. Art is easy, right? Being a good artist is easy. But life is throws shit in your way all the time. You know? So, if you're creating your own hurdles and your own reasonings for why you're not achieving the things you can do, and I'm not trying to imply that's what you're saying. You're just giving me some other samples of what's potentially stopping you. Um, and that's great. That's all it is. It's just a process of elimination, right? You're just listing things that could potentially be taking your time. And once you start recognizing them, all you got to do is, like what you just said, I'll just talk to them about it, or I'll wake up a little earlier, or I'll do something different. Because once you do something different, and modestly so, then, you know, changes will happen. Right? Otherwise, yeah, you're just going to keep having the same problems. And you're going to be like, like, why am I not improving stuff? It's because you, you haven't changed anything. Right? Like, there's that saying, uh, insanity is not that you're you're crazy. Or, like, like uh, what was it? It's like, uh, it's something along those lines, right? Like, where you... It's doing the same thing over and over, over, expecting a different result. Yeah, that's it. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. That's insanity. So you gotta, you got to change something. And, and, you know, I've talked to you about this before. It doesn't have to be a lot. It could be as simple as, hey, guys, like, like I, I love our conversations, but I want to try to make sure I study and get work done. I mean, you could just be painting mindlessly for three hours, and that will be more valuable than just you sitting there talking, right? Because you're kind of doing two things, and that's where it could start. You know, you can have like a reference up, have it on the side that you can kind of eyeball it while you're working, and that's it. And it can be start that simple, and then you start getting really used to it. That's all me and my friends did. We used to just paint and talk all the time. You know, and that's why I'm really good at painting and talking, especially at things that I'm really good at painting, like tumor monsters with big butcher knives. <laughs> you know. Because I'm not, like I said, this is like subconscious for me now. Yeah, use Discord. Like, I'm on there. Like, even in Discord, like, I, I had to do emails and stuff, and I was like, I'm going to just chill in here, but I'm not going to talk. Because, like, and they were, like, talking about stuff that I really wanted to chime in on. And then there was a point where I had to actually even mute that because I was, like, getting too distracted. You know, you just got to catch yourself. You got to just recognize it. You, you know yourself. You know. There is no conversation that's more important that you have to, like, listen to it right at that moment, <laughs> you know? There's nothing on your phone that you have to check right every five minutes that's not going to be, <laughs> that wouldn't have been, that would have been fine to check an hour later, right? Like, you just got to recognize that. Like, my phone was blowing up this whole time, and I didn't check it once. Because I'm teaching. It's like, I can check it after a second. Whatever the hell is going on. And it's usually just someone on Facebook just messaging me. Right? Rarely is it like something urgent. Usually if it's urgent, it'll be like my wife and she'll call me. Right? It's like, I don't need to know if the guys are getting together to play some Overwatch. That's not... I don't need to be like, hey guys, wait for me. I'm teaching class. Just give me 10 minutes. It's like, I don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I either play with them or I don't. It's fine.
you know, the difference between people who really do well and achieve their goals and those who don't is really that that simple change of like being able to turn off distractions on a regular. And again, everything is earned. Don't if you have a hard time doing that, just start with simple stuff of like turning your phone um, on silent, like complete silence, like airplane mode style, right? For like hours on time, hours in a time, at a time, right? Um, uh, another one would be like, don't open a browser at all. Just leave a browser completely closed, you know? Um, another one would be, yeah, just recognize when the conversations of your friends are taking too long. Right? And just start to manage that. Yeah. Recently, I had troubles playing way too many games or just uh, spending too much time doing that, so I ended up just uninstalling everything. Yeah. Whatever you got to do, like to, to manage it. Anywho, any other questions before I let you guys go? Just one last one, because I'm going to try to get into this meeting before it might be too late. How do I use brushes effectively? I find it hard to diversify. Uh, that's that's a easy question to answer. It's it's just practice, man. Like that's a that's a marksmanship or not marksman, a draftsmanship type of thing problem. If you have a hard time managing and just painting well with your brushes, it has it has a lot to do with you just need to paint more. You know, uh, and one practical piece of advice to help you practice that is just timing yourself, like giving yourself tests. You know, don't just like mindlessly do stuff. Like test yourself and say, I'm gonna try to do a painting in in an hour or two hours and you'll just start to recognize the kinds of brushes you use or how you're using them um, but you have to just have good control like I have really good control with the brushes and I've been like you know making my brushes over the many years that I use often right so it's just uh, it's, it's something that you just don't um, get right away it's something that you have to kind of really earn it's like if uh, it's very similar to like working out like I could tell you how to increase your reps range right like oh you want to get stronger chest right uh, do more push-ups increase weight do more reps you know periodically but all of that is just like stuff you need to do it's nothing philosophical about it right <laughs> it's just do it so same thing like just put test different brushes try to paint home paintings with one type of brush you know same thing um, but uh, don't be discouraged if you don't become awesome right away because that's the point. It's just something you, you build towards. And it's an easy thing to build towards, actually. It's really easy to increase your brush um, stuff because you just you just do it a lot. That's really it. Yeah, so just try different brushes. Like, how many different brushes have you tried differently and how often? And once you answer that question, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see that you, oh, not that much. That's why. All right. I'm going to end the class, try to get into the Skype meeting. Um, so it's a little bit, I would have would like to go to 10, 15, 10, 20, but because this meeting. So I'll try to add more time in the next uh, paint over session so we can hang out more. more. Um, or even more so in the next week, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, appreciate you guys. Great work as always. Keep up the good work. Hang out in Discord. I might be in Discord a little bit later today. Uh, I have to try to go to the office today, so I'm going to take a shower and do all that good stuff. But peace out, friends, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks, man. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.